It's 9 p.m. I'm usually tucked into bed by this time, but instead I just drove three and a half hours in the dark to arrive at my unexpected destination. I woke up this morning, like always, with coffee and a drive to work. I completed my shift and went back to my room. I rent for a simple quesadilla and some YouTube, but I won't be staying here much longer. You guys, this has been quite the year for me. As you know, I started off the year in my RV <laughs> that I traveled in for three years and switched to a truck and trailer with my boyfriend and then back in late June of 2023, we had a really nasty breakup. And long story short, because you can watch it here on YouTube, I'll leave a link down below to video or playlist that will catch you up. But um, long story short, I decided to go ahead and stay in Flagstaff, Arizona, where I've never lived before and just start fresh and stay there for at least a year going through all the beautiful seasons that Flagstaff has to offer and hike and work and save money. My name is Allie. I was once a nomad for three years living in my RV. Yet in early 2023, tragedy struck and I lost it all in a bad breakup. I now live in Flagstaff, Arizona, where I'll experience four true seasons for the first time in my life. My goal is to be nomadic again in 2024, but until then, I'm enjoying the mountain life. It's not happening. So if you have been watching, if you watched last week's episode on my channel, you're probably wondering what the hell? What happened? Well, I sort of got evicted, but actually asked to break my lease. Yeah. It happened within seconds. And I packed in one hour and got out of there if you've been watching my channel for the last three months you know that i rented a very inexpensive room for flagstaff uh, living in flagstaff renting in flagstaff is pretty expensive so when i decided to stay there i knew i'd be renting a room and i knew that i would have to find something inexpensive I wasn't really thrilled about renting a room. I mean, I've been a homeowner. I had my own RV. I've lived on my own and I really wanted the privacy, but I had to rent a room. There was no way I was gonna be able to rent an apartment on my own or a house. So a room it was and a very inexpensive room. Believe me, I didn't want to rent a room that was built out of a garage, had strange paint it had a strange paint motif if that's what you call it <laughs> um i had one extension cord one extension cord for all of my electrical needs in the room i didn't really tell you guys much but i had some really strange house rules where i couldn't do certain things at certain times of the day and other things at other times of the day and you know, I was told those rules from the very beginning and I said, okay, I can follow those. It's not that big of a deal. You know, the, the rent is cheap. So since the rent is cheap and surprisingly, I felt safe there. I say surprisingly because the day I left, that's when I realized 
I wasn't safe there. So here's how it all went down. Apparently, I broke one of those house rules that had to do with the electricity. My landlord knocked on my door and asked me what I did. And I had no clue what she was talking about. And she began to accuse me of blowing a circuit or something in the electricity, blowing a fuse box, um, something of that matter. And I was kind of confused. I was like, I, didn't, I don't know what I did. I'm just using the extension cord <laughs> that I was given. And she was really angry and stomped off with her hands frailing, saying that now she has to call an electrician and it's more money, money, money. I'm downplaying this a little bit. At that time, I was a little concerned and was honestly thinking, I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe staying there with a woman that sounds irrational. At some point she came back and was complaining about something else that had broken because of the electric issue. And I asked her to break the lease. I said, I, I, I need to break the lease. And she jubilantly said yes and called me a black witch I've I've been called some names before and maybe I deserve them probably deserve them but I've never been called a black witch I will never forget that that is a very strange thing to call somebody at least in my opinion I don't know is that something common these days, I don't, I don't know. I actually don't know anything about witchcraft. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Except what's in the movies, which is usually not what is truly portrayed, I guess. I don't know. Over the next hour, I proceeded to just pack my things. I mean, I, I only had a room, so I was able to pack within an hour. And the whole time, I was packing and running my stuff running my stuff back and forth from my room to my truck and packing them into my truck. You can see some of it. <laughs> um, she verbally harassed me. I don't remember a lot of what she said. I know that she accused me of certain things that I, I don't do. Um, she called me horrible names. Um, and at one point, honestly, I was carrying probably that basket full of clothing and I was walking through her garage and she pushed me. She shoved me from behind for a couple of days and I honestly felt like I could still feel her hands on my shoulder blades. I couldn't, but just thinking about it, that that's kind of traumatic, you know, and pretty much a stranger. I, yes, I lived with her for about three and a half months, but I really didn't know her. Pretty much a stranger verbally attacking and then shoving me and so I dropped the basket I was done like she had already verbally harassed me for quite a long time at that point actually for probably about 10 or 15 minutes and then she shoved me and I dropped the basket and I flipped around in her garage and I looked her directly in the eye and I said don't f with me and I leaned towards her I didn't touch her <laughs> And I turned around and picked up my basket and I proceeded to, to continue to, to pack. I just desperately wanted to get out of there. And I just, if she decided to say anything to me anymore, unless it had to do with giving the keys back or um, money, which she never mentioned, but um, if unless it was important about getting out of there faster, I just ignored her harassing. And I literally put my head down and just kept packing. Once I was done, I just left. It was already kind of getting dark. And I drove a couple miles down the road and then realized where the hell am I going? I didn't have any money because 
I was just starting to get back on my feet just starting after three months I had some back stuff that I had to pay I had been trying to catch up on my finances and um, I had no money so I just jumped on highway 40 and headed to Lake Havasu where I am now I honestly contemplated for over a week on how I would explain what happened to me. I've never been attacked like that. Not physically. Actually, not verbally either. I've had verbal altercations with other human beings, of course. Of course. But nothing that irrational to tell you the truth and so I debated on telling you nothing or telling it all which you're hearing neither you're hearing a very brief cliff notes of what happened all I know is that it was a very odd experience and it was traumatic for me and I'm sure some of you are thinking why didn't you just stay in Flagstaff if you're in Havasu, it's the same difference, right? I mean, it's warmer here. There's no snow. <laughs> I think Flagstaff is either getting ready for snow or it's going, or it already did snow. And I had a job there. But I'm not going to lie. That night, I just, I, I couldn't stay there. I couldn't. It, just felt like a negative vibe and I just I I couldn't stay in Flagstaff I had to literally run so now I'm happy to be somewhere where I feel safe as well as at home I've been in Havasu on and off in my RV for a while um, as some of you may know my son lives here and my mom <laughs> lives an hour and a half away and then my other son lives in Las Vegas, which is kind of far, but um, still Mojave Desert. <laughs> it just sucks because I was really starting to get on my feet. I, I was just really making strides. I was feeling at home there. So for now, I'm gonna stay in Havasu um, I've put applications in already uh, l this last Monday. It was Thanksgiving week, so nobody got back to me, but we'll see. Um, it's only Saturday, so I did put in, I think I put in, I don't know, about six to ten applications around town. Uh, a couple of them I'm not qualified for, but maybe they'll hire me. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm going to stay and have a sue for now and make a go of it and uh yeah looking for a new job nothing has changed i am still going after the same goals of being nomadic again i do have a few more things i want to tell you guys but i just have a feeling that this was enough for one video this was enough but uh yeah stay tuned next week i have another big announcement you guys might already guess it but I do. Anyway, I'm safe. What you watched last week was dramatic, but I'm not gonna lie, that's how I felt. Um, I honestly felt like it was a very traumatic experience for me to witness, to be part of. And I'm happy to be in a safe place now. <laughs>